Hi, my name is Leon Rowe, currency trader and trading coach at trading180.com, and welcome to this week's supply and demand for it's some gold fundamental and technical analysis. Uh, looking at the week ahead, the 8th of October in the United States, attention will be on the inflation report. That's going to be very important. FOMC min meeting minutes and speeches by Federal Reserve officials, wholesale price data and the Michigan Consumer Confidence Index. In China, uh, China will release its trade balance, PPI inflation and inflation rates. That's going to be important as well. Inflation is linked uh, to really how the economy is doing. Um, and while in the United Kingdom, we'll provide monthly um, GDP figures and that again is going to be um, important to determine really what the central bank are likely to do, the Bank of England are likely to do with interest rates. Australia will reveal Westpac consumer confidence and NAB business confidence data. And Germany will share insights into its industrial production. And this is from tradingeconomics.com. Uh, if you go to tradingeconomics.com, they have an, um, more of an in-depth uh, analysis on what they think uh, with regards to um, the week's um, news and what may happen. So, um, if you are new as well, by the way, to the to the uh, mentoring group uh, in the Discord mentoring group, if you go to the trading videos channel, I have uploaded the um, the week's um, uh, technical analysis. It's about an hour and thirteen minutes. Also, as well, I've got some fundamental analysis, which includes uh, bank analysis that I don't include in the uh, Sunday YouTube video, um, and that's the weekly fundamentals plus the weeks um, some of the weeks videos as well so basically i've got one here how to approach trade entry stop hunts and candlesticks but one here changing risk reward expectations when fundamentals change or are uncertain and i've got the live group call recording which was a long one uh on wednesday which was two hours 42 and then i've got some other videos as well where i talk about the cad swiss um, as well as the euro cad so lots of videos to catch up on uh, if you haven't done so already and by the way if you are not a part of the trading mentoring group um, i will reopen it in january 2024 but i know some of you have emailed me asking uh, to join after we closed i closed on friday so i'm going to do a last minute intake um Today, if uh, you email me at info at trading180.com and you do want to join, then um, any emails I receive today, then I will um, give you the details and reply back uh, with how you can join uh, the Forex Mentoring Discord group. Uh, if you go to trading180.com to find out a bit more information about that. Anyways, let's get into the, uh, the technicals for the week and some more fundamentals. And so uh, starting off from the dollar index, and the dollar index and the dollar has just literally been going from strength to strength. It's, this is no um, you know accident. This is not uh, driven just by you know price action or some Elliott wave, you know, uh, no ABCD, one, two, three, four, five wave. It's really driven by uh, the market, right? And the market's expectation of the value of the dollar. And so um, for anyone who's following me, been following me for any length of time, you've known that my bias week, week in, week out since around these uh, July, August areas have been to go long on the dollar and you can see it really play out. And so um, the Fed uh, on Friday's uh, FOMC report, um, sorry, non-farm payrolls report, apologies, um, was was pretty much uh, a blowout so it says here the headline is the fed will lean towards another rate hike after blowout payroll so fmc will have uh, option to move again in november or december fed will be concerned about a reacceleration in the economy um, and why are they concerned about the reacceleration in the economy and that's really kind of down to um the fact that they don't want inflation to um to, to, to move away from their 2% uh, target because long story short, not to get into it too much, but uh, rising inflation is linked with a growing economy. And so actually the Federal Reserve do want the economy to shrink a little to get inflation back down to their 2% target. And so uh, let's read the first maybe paragraph or two. And it says here, hotter than expected US jobs report will likely nudge the Federal Reserve towards raising interest rates again by the end of the year. So non-farm payrolls increased 336,000 last month after 
a sizable upward revisions to the prior two months. A Bureau of Labor Statistics report showed Friday the unemployment rate held at 3.8 and wages rose at a modest pace. And this will keep the Fed very guarded and very much concerned about upside risk, said Luke Tilly, chief economist at Wilmington Trust Corp. Um, because this plays into their concerns about reacceleration in the economy. It sounds a bit strange, right? You'd think that uh, the, the central bank and the government would want a, a really good economy, but the more uh, that um, inflation um, uh grows basically um, or the economy grows is the, uh, the higher inflation typically gets and then what happens is is that the federal reserve have to end up hiking rates a bit more which actually may have a detrimental effect uh, to the economy and they're looking really for a soft landing so um, i think in the short term uh, overall you know what that means for the dollar is that the dollar hopefully should want to continue moving higher I'm not saying it's going to move higher this week nobody knows but overall i think the trend for a higher dollar is still intact whether it you know uh, kind of bounces from where we are right now in that demand zone or whether we pull back a bit more and get a deeper pull back and get a cheaper price for uh, the dollar um either way i think the dollar is still uh, the, uh, the the currency to buy at the moment again barring some sort of um maybe uh risk event you know out of the blue uh but uh, fundamentally uh the economy is doing well inflation is coming down the federal reserve may look to high crates looking at the cme fed watch tool and at the moment it doesn't look like the market has you know priced in a rate hike um, but the more the data comes out and of course we have inflation data uh, this week so if that comes in higher than expected you can expect this number in terms of a hike at 27 percent uh, to definitely re-accelerate to the upside and the market start to price in uh, a hike which then means obviously um, uh, a higher uh, a higher dollar also what was interesting was that speculators up to dollar longs ahead of latest US jobs reports the leverage funds increased long dollar bets for the third week according to the CFTC greenback briefly rallied after hotter than expected jobs data and so speculative traders loaded up on bullish dollar positions ahead of the latest reading of US employment data which showed hiring unexpectedly surged in September so they basically put their money where their mouth was and um, and uh, yeah they got the right result in terms of the fundamentals but in price action it was something slightly different it was something slightly different in price and so um, before I get into that um, there is a book I highly recommend uh, it's called 50 trades in 50 weeks uh, it's by a trader um, by the name of Brent Donnelly who was I think he was a market maker or, or head trader for HSBC and worked in many different institutions and banks and on uh, Friday yesterday many of you may have uh, seen actually price for the dollar spike down and spike up right so pretty much if we go to something like the euro dollar what you saw is something like on the hourly time frame where prices spiked down we were watching this and then it just spiked up above um price action and many traders would be confused by this and this is something that actually you know does happen um, if you've been trading for any length of time um sometimes these things do happen right so you get good news or and bad price or you can have bad news and good price right uh, not necessarily bad news good bad or bad or good it's more just um uh, to do with the uh the the, the opposite happening on what you expect and um you know this paragraph kind of highlights it as well um in terms of um the, the the explanation for it and in the book he basically goes on how to kind of approach um these scenarios if these things do happen so it's definitely um worth a a read and a buy um my theory is that this is just really uh, a stop hunting there's a lot of traders that went short here um and personally, I never would have gone, never went short here simply because of the risk reward ratio, right? So the risk reward in terms of looking at, um, you know, trying to go short here. Let's say you press your stop loss around here, but look at the downside. We know that this is an expensive area, 
right for the dollar and so the risk reward just wasn't worth it if your risk reward is something like this you know you're buying up here then that makes a bit more sense but not many traders may have got into um, you know pressed sell or press short uh, at these areas I typically wait for candlesticks to close even after the news um, uh, or I'm getting in before uh, the news, but I wasn't necessarily trading the US dollar because I did think it was um, around these highs. But I do think that we are due for a short um, anyway, if, either this week or into the next weeks. And again, it really does depend upon uh, um, the inflation data and also what happens with the euro. But and I'll get into the euro in a sec, but. Um, but I think uh, overall the dollar is still a short regardless of what happened on Friday with uh, with short-term price action. Um, the dollar for me is still a buy. It just means that, you know, pulling back um, on the dollar just means you can buy it for, for, for cheaper, um, even though you might have lost a trade or, or so. So dollar for me is a, um, is a buy. Dollar yen, I think the dollar yen should be move up uh, this week or uh, over the next coming weeks reason really kind of being main reason is because um the bank of japan are waiting for inflation especially wage inflation to kind of go coming higher and uh, last week basically japan slowed in forecasted wage growth uh, supports boj caution so lackluster pay suggests bank of japan has to wait more to, to normalize basically remove yield curve control um, and raise interest rates and household cut spending again compared to previous years so um, the one of the main indicators that the bank of japan are watching to, to indicate whether they would want to um, remove yield curve control um, isn't necessarily moving in the direction to make them want to uh, remove yield curve control and so uh, with that and with a strong uh, you know dollar at the moment I'm not saying that again price can't go you know down this week of course it can but um, if it does pull back then ultimately um, probably you're looking at more buying opportunities the higher prices go though past that 150 into the 151 152s you could start to see um, a more intervention. On Monday, there was the um, speculation that the Bank of Japan did intervene, but they never announced that they did. So um, the market kind of took that with a pinch of salt. And so it looks like the data is probably gonna be more driving the, um, the dollar to the upside. But if you are anticipating um, trying to get short on the dollar yen, it would really be trying to anticipate uh, some sort of intervention, um, another intervention, um, you know, towards the one five twos, one five threes, as we get to these, you know, these higher areas here. Apparently, um, Goldman Sachs and uh, some other banks are looking at one five five as the uh, as as the area where uh, the bank might start to intervene. The Bank of Japan. Um, Dollar Swiss, dollar Swiss, and I am actually in this trade long at the moment. So, um, but looking at this from a daily perspective, we did come up to this supply zone, uh, sold off a little bit. The nearest demand zone is all the way down to the uh, to this area here. Um, so for me, out of the two, I'm definitely looking to buy the dollar over the Swiss franc. If I lose this trade, then I'll just look for, um, you know, continued buy trades as long as obviously the dollar um, and the data supports uh, buying uh, the dollar, right? So it's just, you know, price action doesn't always correlate. We're looking for value. Um, and so the, the more it pulls back, because this has been on actually quite a, quite a big run. And um, and so uh, I would expect at least a decent pullback to some area of, of demand, um, and that makes that that can make sense. Understand that this is more of an expensive area, a bit more of an expensive area to buy in. But um, I think if it pulls back to that uh, eighty nine area, eighty nine sixties, then I think that's going to be a very nice area to look for some buy trades. Um, moving on to the dollar. CAD and the Canadian dollar did actually have some news, some really good news, which could potentially make the Bank of Canada look to high rates. So Canada jobs gains triple expectations and wages grew faster. So 
gains driven by part-time work, educational services, and upward trend happening during record high immigration. So Canada's labor market blew past expectations for a third straight month while wage growth accelerated, doing little to quell some bets for another rate hike amid stubborn price pressures. And um, the last, um, I think it was core inflation for Canada did um, come in uh, higher than expected. So um, yeah, there was some positive news, and I say positive, but some news that basically uh, puts rate hikes on the table for the Canadian dollar for the Bank of Canada. So um, you can start to see uh, prices did start to obviously you know uh, fall away a little bit. I wouldn't necessarily trade the dollar CAD because both uh, currencies and both central banks are looking to potentially high rates. So there's not really a divergence there, but maybe the Canadian dollar against another currency that isn't like, for example, or might not like, for example, the uh, the, the, the Swiss franc would be a decent um, trade to look for in terms of a long CAD trade. But uh, fundamentally, looking at or technically looking at this uh, this area here i think any pullbacks if you want to be a buyer of the us dollar against the canadian dollar is going to be the first area to look for if you're looking for short trades then you're looking for any kind of pullbacks up into the 138s 138.50s before looking at going uh, short uh, new zealand dollar us dollar and i think the new zealand dollar might be on a um might start to strengthen there was some there's been some positive data out of New Zealand recently and the, again, the possibility of a potential rate hike. So this could actually be a decent uh, buy, but not against, uh, again, not really against the uh, the US dollar. I'm not really uh, keen on buying anything against the US dollar. So um, if you do want to get and uh, do look to trade this currency pair, I think the highs of this supply zone, and if you're looking for a buy, it's really at the bottom of this demand zone before looking at going uh, long. But uh, yeah, I'm not looking to buy the uh, this currency pair at all or trade the currency pair. Pound dollar, I will continue to uh, short this, uh, this, uh, this currency and we've pulled up to a decent area of supply. Um, where are we now? Yeah, so it's it's decent. It's also got some added confluence when you look back. That area has been traded as uh, support and resistance within that area of supply as well. So I think that's nice. So either if there's some, you know, if there's not any good news for the pound, then I think that should roll over. If not, I think the one two four area is going to be really maybe the 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 short term limit of this uh, this move to the upside but again it does depend on what happens with the dollar and the in, in inflation if inflation remains sticky or higher then i do think that the uh, the dollar should continue to uh, to strengthen but um let's go to some uh, bank of england news and bailey ba bank of england's bailey says the job is not done on fighting uk inflation and so he's trying to sound hawkish. So the Bank of England governor, uh, Andrew Bailey, said the job is not done on fighting inflation, even though he expects those pressures to dissipate rapidly this year. So he does expect inflation to come down quite uh, significantly and quickly. Um, but the problem is, is that there's uh, signs that the UK economy is weakening. So Deputy Governor warns employment could drop suddenly and slower consumer spending on household goods uh, points to a slump. And so this is from the Bank of Un um, England's Deputy Governor, Ben Broadbent, uh, warns that there are clear signs that interest rate rises are dragging on the UK economy and causing unemployment to pick up. And if that does start to come to fruition, then the upside to the pound really is going to be quite limited. There's no reason for me really to want to buy the pound if uh, GDP, the monthly GDP comes out, um, you know, a bit disappointing or a bit flat. So um, I do think any pullbacks are really kind of shorting opportunities on the pound, uh, dollar, euro dollar, and um, similar to the pound where we have um, when you compare really the two, you know, economies, the Europe and uh, and the US, it looks like the US is, um, you know, in in a much better uh, situation. 
we have ECB's uh, Villaroy sees no justification for more rate hikes for now. So this is the French official echoes ECB's Casimir in discussing in discussing rate peak and ECB vice president says it's too soon to talk about cuts though. So um, they do have a governing council. Let me just zoom in a little bit. So they obviously you know vote. And you have the Hawks and you have the Doves. And uh, it looks like, I don't know whether this is more, more Hawks than Doves, but Alt and the Influence Gauge, but it does look like um, uh, the, uh, depending on what happens with the economy, of course, and the inflation coming down, um, I think, you know, uh, that the ECB are probably more likely done hiking. So, if that is the case, then we should get either a pullback into one of these uh, supply zones before looking at, you know, another sell off. And of course, uh, you can add, um, you know, an area of support, horizontal support, if you want to use that as uh, some extra confluence within those uh, supply zones. But um, ultimately, um, my bias is to the short side. For now, there could be a deeper pullback. But um, any pullbacks, I think, for me, are shorting opportunities. Looking at the, the Australian dollar, and the Australian dollar, um, I think, might be, you know, uh, having a bit of a turning point. And um, the, uh, th there was a new governor um, that's taken the helm. So Australia extends rate pause at Bullock's first meeting to RBA reiterate some further tightening of policy may be needed so that sounds hawkish right and uh, highlights ongoing uncertainties including china property woes so there are risks and that is uh, china is australia is closely linked to how um uh, china uh, china's economy and how it's doing so at the beginning i did talk about the um you know china trade balance ppi and inflation um rates and if you know those start to be positive and those are good readings then in fact um, that should help um you know australia as well so uh, it says here some further tightening of monetary policy may be required to ensure that inflation returns to target in a reasonable time frame but that will continue to depend upon the data and the evolving assessment of risks bullock who took the helm just over two weeks ago said in her post meeting statement so she's come in and she's pretty much said she is willing to hike if necessary if the data does support uh hikes so it's all about looking at any data like jobs um, and inflation and the economy that does support um, uh, rate hikes and if they do i think the australian dollar could be a buy again not really against the us dollar maybe against something a bit weaker like for example i don't know the japanese yen um fundamentally and maybe the swiss franc so that could be a nice buying opportunity for the australian dollar but aussie dollar i think um if you're looking at sell trades you're really looking at this area here or a fresher area of supply if you're looking at looking to buy then there's obviously some demand around here but um the dollar is going to be a very difficult sell at the moment in my book so um nothing there and gold and gold um, i was saying in my last uh, weekly video which wasn't last week but the week before which was when prices were somewhere up here and really explaining that gold is likely to have a tough time simply because You've got higher uh, uh, treasury yields, right? So treasury yields are, are higher. You've got um, uh, uh, higher interest rates on the US dollar as well. And obviously the dollar and gold move, typically move inversely. So if you've got 5%, if you get 5% for just holding uh, the US dollar and then, you know, depending on whether you're holding a two year or 10 year, you're looking at somewhere between, you know, maybe something like 4. I think it's 4.5 to 5% as well um, on the, on US treasuries, right? Then because gold doesn't pay a yield, it's gonna be very difficult for gold to really, um, you know, stay 
um, state a bid basically and, and state a buy. So yes, this is the reason why you've seen this kind of drop on gold. Um, we've come down to the 1820s. We could even see, and this is it's like a key level, but we could even see prices drop a bit further. Um, there are levels of demand around here, but um, yeah, it's gonna be difficult to buy gold at the moment. I think you definitely need some sort of trigger or some sort of sentiment to change against the dollar, maybe some um, some fears around uh, recession coming into play, which doesn't look like it, but uh, you know, or, or some something out of the blue. I'm not too sure what it could be, but um, but at the moment, it does look like the path of least resistance is to the downside when it comes to um, when it comes to uh, gold. Also, as well, you do have a thing that looks like some hidden supply there. Yeah, it looks like hidden supply. So this would be the first area to look for some uh, short trade if you were looking for a short trade right there. And of course, that's that's you having the bias that um, the, the dollar really is a buy. And if the dollar is a buy, then gold is a sell. If you think the dollar is a sell, um, then gold could be a decent buy at this key area of, uh, of, of demand as well as uh, support and resistance. So you can see where the institutions have been trading that area and have thought that the 1820s to 1800 area is an area of, um, of value. Anyways, guys, that's it for this week. And um, yeah, again, just a quick reminder that if you do want to join, um, you know, this uh, for the, the, the last intake really this year is going to be today by the end of today. But I don't, if I don't get any emails or if um, you email me tomorrow, um, unfortunately, I'm not going to be able to um, accept your application. So just email me. Uh, just saying that you're interested today and um, and I'll uh, open up a space for you. Otherwise, um, if you do want to join, the next opening will be January in 2024 next year. So guys, I hope you have a great trading week. Take care and I'll speak to you all. I agree with it, but that is my uh, approach. And, um, and if you have any comments, I'll just read out some of the comments. So Eagle says, remember for the new people here, there will always be pullbacks. So don't get discouraged. Even, oh, sorry, if for example, now EuroCAD is bearish, but you will see pullbacks, sorry, one second, but you see pullbacks um, up like you see now. But we know overall fundamental trend for EuroCAD is down bearish. Um, same goes with other currencies or any trading assets on equity markets. And this is, a, this is a great point that you make as well, right? This is a great point that you make as well, Igor. And I'm going to get to some of the other comments as well. But I just want to touch on Igor's, um, Igor's comments. And let me just delete clear all drawings, right? So I know some of you have come in um, and are looking at definitely day trading strategies. Now, I had a, it's funny because I had a talk with a trader yesterday, yesterday evening, and um, yeah, he he asked me this question in terms of you know how many trades that I take, do I take a, a a day or a week or a month, and I and I pretty much just said, look, it depends upon the level because what's more important is is the level, right, and 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 discounts. So first and foremost, we're looking at you know cheap, right and expensive areas. I'll try and wrap this up as soon as I can, by the way, because I know we've got a, this, we're half an hour and I haven't even started the uh, currency uh, summary report, but I think this is important for everybody, right? So cheap and expensive areas. Now, depending on which way you're trading, right? Let's say, for example, you're a buyer of the base currency. Let's say, I don't know, this is, this is dollar yen, right? This is dollar yen. So obviously you want to be a buyer, or we'll say obviously, but at the moment, fundamentally, you would want to be a buyer of the dollar, right? It makes all the sense in the world, yeah? So at the moment, this is this would be considered cheap and this would be considered expensive, right? Who buys at highs? No one wants to buy at highs. Now, let's say, for example, this is a, you know, a, a daily chart, right? So what we're looking for is daily demand zones. Now, Let's say you're a day trader, right? And prices pull back. Let's say this represents, I don't know, uh, uh, a 300 pip pullback, 
Yeah, that move to that from that high to that low represents 300 pips. You must be careful or be very, very mindful that you're that you're not if you're a day trader of what's going on in the higher time frame and be patient enough to understand where the cheap or bargain prices potentially are. We know this is was a bargain. Why? Because prices made a new high and that was a previous expensive area. And prices were such a, you know, such a bargain down here that it pushed past that previous expensive area, right? So when prices come back down to this area, the best place to look for a trade is down here, right? That would be the best place. That's not to say that prices can't go here and can't bounce off that, you know, support term or resistance term support, etc. I'm not saying that. But what I'm saying is this. If this low to this high, this bargain to this expensive area, you know, uh, discounts and premiums, this represents 300 pips. A lot of times day traders can get caught in looking at a 100 pip move or 100 pip pullback and thinking, yep, that's a, that's a big enough move for me to want to get involved. Yeah, because they're not taking into account the bigger picture on a, on a, on a lower time frame. This area here may look like something like this right where you're seeing you know certain levels and you're thinking okay well yeah i'm down on a you know a 15 minute chart and you know this is what it looks like you know it might look like something like this and you're thinking oh there's a nice little demand zone or some support and resistance in that area and i want to be a buyer here and Neon said there's a stop hunt around here and you know or some sort of cpr not realizing that in fact you're still buying at highs or you're still buying at least above what would be considered 50% fair value, right? Because 50% pullback between a high and expensive and a cheap area would be known as you know fair value, right? So it's really important, yeah, that you understand where you are in terms of where you're buying, yeah, and whether you're buying. And again, that's not to say that this can't go higher, right? And I don't personally, I don't care if it goes higher because my I'm looking at I'm looking my my, my priority is buying at discounted prices, yeah? I'm not looking to just take any, you know, willy-nilly level, yeah? So when the, when the trader asked me yesterday about, you know, how many trades I take, and I just said to him, look, it really just depends on whether the level or the area that I'm looking at sets up, yeah? If this sets up within a day, brilliant, excellent. I'll never trade, you know, within 24 hours if it pulls back within 24 hours, 300 pips, brilliant. If it takes a week for that to pull back 300 pips to get to a demand zone where I'm interested in, then it takes a week, <laughs> right? So I can't, you know, like I said, some weeks it can be, I can take two or three trades a week, right? Maybe even four or five on a really good week, yeah? I say good weeks, not good or bad, just, you know, the opportunity arises, right? And then maybe there might be a week or two where we're waiting for prices to pull back and we, you know, there's all this lack of volatility, for example. Volatility dries up. No one can control how far prices or how much prices are going to move. We have periods of high volatility and periods of low volatility. So we have to just understand that those types of things are beyond our control. And it's important you understand this because you are going to have periods of this, yeah? Yeah. And it's not my strategy, or it might be my strategy, you could blame my strategy if you want, but in the way that we trade, it's not, you know, we're looking for the opportunity and not be driven by, I need to make money today. I need to make money this week because I need to pay my bills and I need to da 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 da, -da right? That's not how, you know, that's not really how I trade. I know some traders do trade like that, but you're never going to take the best trades and the most optimum trades if for this week, for some reason, you know, there's been a, you know, prices haven't gone anywhere and you've, you've kind of had to just sit on your hands the whole week and then you're going down into lower and lower and lower time frames, you know, rather than going to an hourly, you're thinking, all right, let me go down to the 15 minute. Oh, you know what? There's nothing there. Let me go down to the five minute. And let me look at a one minute level. Then you start, that's how you traders end up typically getting caught out, right? It's understanding that there will be a pullback to some degree. Sometimes you have to wait for it and the wait might be a week or two. It is what it is. But if, you know, we're trading, you know, multiple pairs, hopefully at some point there should be, you know, at least a trading opportunity, a minimum of one or two a week, right? There should be something like that. Um, it's rare that you don't get anything for the whole week. Um, but just understand that if there is, if there is a situation where prices have gone without you and you're looking for a pullback, 
just wait for the pullback. That's just my advice. Of course, it's your own money. You can make your own decisions. But just know that if you do take a trade at highs and I don't comment, you know, on, on the trade, you know, in terms of I might say, oh, it's a good looking trade, but I might give you some feedback and say, well, it is at highs. So just be careful. Um, then, you know, that's just what it is. Also, as well, if you are trading at highs and you can't help yourself, reduce your risk size because the chances of it probably going back to discount is 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 higher than it is you know buying at highs right because remember as well liquidity needs to be got right liquidity needs to be got there are institutions that have missed out on certain you know moves or haven't necessarily filled enough orders right and the job of the market maker right is to provide liquidity for these institutions so if you see some unfair auctions to the upside a couple just know that those unfair auctions need to be filled at some point it could be today tomorrow next week next month but there needs to be liquidity provided right and that will happen and we will you will get a pullback and an opportunity so just try to be patient so hopefully <laughs> uh, that explains uh things as well let me just go back a little bit suspense says the reason why these influence the reason why these influence because the required rate of return investors require uh, these returns if someone didn't know. Sorry, the reason why these influence because the required rate of return investors require these returns if someone didn't know. I'm not too sure. Maybe it was that was about, was that about um, the bonds? The bonds uh, side of things, Spencer. Uh, it says, remember that bonds are debt security if someone didn't know. Yeah, absolutely, they, they are debt. Um, uh, Spencer says, this is like the one thing I learned well drilled into me coming to trading 180. Yeah, yeah, this, you have to, man. You can't chase, you can't chase price. You can't, you know, say, oh, I need to take five trades this week. And, you know, you haven't taken any trades over two days and then you start forcing bad trades. It's, 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 it's all about the level and the discount, right? Whether you're buying it cheap, expensive, and value isn't present every single day right and believe it or not it might not be present every single week right it will present itself but you have to kind of be a bit more patient um eagle says hey leon i've just shared dyna dynamic yield curve uh 2007 versus 2023 take a look and see similarities another tip to let us know in advance that recession is coming eventually probably 2024 2025 we do not know but it is a good indicator to watch okay that's interesting that's interesting um yeah so but you know um possibly 2024 2025 who knows but um for now it looks like the dollar is still a buy right <laughs> it looks like the dollar is definitely still a buy there was an article we'll get into it a bit later about the dollar um uh yeah the king that's exactly it. and you called it you, you've been calling it igor i have to give you your uh your praises um you've been calling it for a while and uh it's come to fruition right so brilliant 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 call on the uh on the dollar um so yeah so that's basically it right so that's the um just to, just i guess a bit of an introduction to uh trading 180 and the approach that we and i take so um currency summary report 